A breaking piece of news with regard to Roy Moore allegations, Al Franken fallout, plus CNN does its best to go after Trump on Russia and falls directly on its face, as does the entire media. I'll tell you about that one. I want to get to all the latest news, particularly a piece of breaking news with regard to Roy Moore's chief accuser. There are really two chief accusers in the Roy Moore case. One is a woman named Lee Korfman who says when she was 14 years old that Roy Moore attempted to molest her, and a woman named Beverly Young Nelson who accused Roy Moore of basically putting her in a car and almost attempting to rape her when she was 16 years old. She's the one, of course, who came out with the yearbook, the signed yearbook. We'll talk about a breaking piece of news in that case that really throws Beverly Young Nelson into credibility crisis. Beverly Young Nelson, you remember her, we played uh, significant portions of her audio when she first broke news, was sitting next to the execrable Gloria Allred, that she was allegedly molested by Roy Moore, the Senate Republican candidate in Alabama, when she was 16 years old. So all the way back in 1977, she claimed that Roy Moore had met her at a restaurant, was hitting on her, wrote her a note in her yearbook, and then one night when she, when, when she didn't have a ride home, he offered to give her a ride, brought her around the back in the car, locked the door, and then proceeded to try to molest her. That was her claim. And she trotted out this yearbook as proof that she knew Roy Moore, because Moore said he never met her. He didn't know who she was. So she trotted out this yearbook. And Moore said, it's a forgery. And she said, it's not a forgery. And actually, Gloria Allred went even further. Gloria Allred said, the entire thing, the entire thing is genuine, and the entire thing was written by Roy Moore. Well, a very bad thing happened on the way to Beverly Young Nelson's credibility, okay? And that is that Beverly Young Nelson admitted in an interview with ABC News that she wrote part of the inscription. Now, she didn't write, according to her, the actual note. She didn't write Roy Moore's actual signature, but she did write the date and the place underneath, right? Now, the reason that this is a problem, I'll show you, I'll show you what she had to say. The reason this is a problem is because if they had just come out at the very beginning and they had said, Roy Moore wrote this note, and then to remind myself of where this was, I wrote the date and the place underneath, right? Just like you would on the back of a photo, everybody would have gone, oh, okay. Especially because there's now a second note that Roy Moore wrote a graduation card to a 17-year-old that looks very much like this note, right? The signatures look pretty much the same. But because people were automatically saying this was a forgery, and because Gloria Allred refused to turn it over to any sort of impartial third-hand source, or second-hand source, or refused to turn over to any sort of handwriting expert. Because of all that, this now throws the entire story in jeopardy. Here's Beverly Young Nelson talking about this and, and admitting that she wrote the little inscription under the note. Young's proof that she knew more? Her yearbook with this inscription. But Moore and his supporters have called into question that inscription, noting the writing under the signature appears to be different. Let's look at Beverly Nelson. Everybody knows her yearbook is a forgery. Nelson says she did make notes to the inscription, but the message was all Roy Moore. Beverly, he signed your yearbook. He did sign it. And you made some notes underneath. Yes. Okay, so how, number one, does the GMA reporter who's reporting this not ask why? When were the notes made? What were the specific notes made? Right, it says the date and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, the place, the, the, this steakhouse that, that apparently she worked. Now, does this throw the entire story into, into severe credibility crisis? Not quite, because Roy Moore said he never knew the woman. He said that the restaurant didn't exist. The signatures, again, look the same. They should submit it now to an independent handwriting expert. They should have already. Gloria Allred is a hack. It's unbelievable to me that Gloria Allred didn't submit this in the first place. But there is a tendency to run too far with the story. So I'm seeing headlines today. There's a headline from Breitbart. Bombshell. She admits she forged the signature. No, she did not admit she forged the signature. What you just saw is the entirety of the tape. Right, the actual headline over at Breitbart right now, I want to make sure that I don't, I don't give, uh, steer you bum on what exactly their headline is. Bombshell. Moore accuser admits forging yearbook. Silence for weeks as evidence of hoax grew. Right, Moore admits, admits forging yearbook. She did not admit forging the yearbook. She admitted to writing a note underneath the signature. So again, this throws her credit. Two things can be true at once. One, her credibility can be it can have serious problems now because she didn't admit this from the start and because Gloria Allred openly stated the entire thing was written by this woman. But it's also true that she didn't admit to forging the entire note. She specifically said she didn't forge the entire note in this particular element. So I don't know why people have to lie about what... I really don't know why people have to lie about what exactly she admitted in order to throw this woman's credibility into crisis. I don't really understand how how that's the case it's it's confusing to me um but 
again, it does have a real credibility problem, and there are going to be a lot of people who hang their hats on this peg. Now, again, she's not the only accuser against Roy Moore. There's another accuser who says she was molested when she was 14. That was the one that was tracked down by the Washington Post. There are a bunch of other women who say that Roy Moore was dating them and trying to kiss them and hit on them when they were under the age of 18. There were many of those women. There are reports that he was banned from the local food court at the mall. But all of that said... Is this a problem for Beverly Young Nelson? It is. But it shows the dishonesty of our politics, number one, that Gloria Allred didn't admit this stuff up front, and number two, that GMA didn't bother to press the questions, and number three, that people are now saying that this discredits the entirety of the signature and the note, because it doesn't. Okay, so all of those things can be true at once. It can also be true that this doesn't really change some of the underlying other allegations. People are using this to, to dismiss all the allegations. All the other allegations are now dismissed because there is this this problem with Beverly Young Nelson's credibility. And that seems to me overkill as well. So with all that said, I'm trying to give you the most intellectually honest take I can. It's a serious problem for her credibility. It's a serious problem for Gloria Allred, who once again demonstrates to the world that she is terrible at her job and is a hack lawyer and, uh, and a troll. But it doesn't, do, it, doesn't do, it doesn't carry all the heavy weight that I think a lot of people want it to carry, the weight that says that Roy Moore is now off the hook. I think that's, that's, a, little bit, uh, that's a little bit of a stretch. All, all that being said, uh, Roy Moore is going to win. There's no question that Roy Moore is going to win this election now. He's going to win the election by 8 to 10 points. Uh, he was already winning the election. These charges had started to fade in the public mem memory, and not only in the public memory, but in the, the minds of a lot of conservatives, because conservatives have made the concerted effort now, the concerted move, that they have decided that when some, the initial attack on somebody like Roy Moore is initially over an issue where they agree with Roy Moore, then all further attacks will be attributed to malice, bad motivations, and fraud. Right? It's not just with Roy Moore. This is true for Donald Trump, too. When the initial attacks on Donald Trump were suggestions that his right-wing views made him unpalatable, then when there were later suggestions that were of a more personal nature, everybody just chalked that up to media animus for Donald Trump. The same thing is true of Joe Arpaio. Joe Arpaio in Arizona is now apparently considering a run for the Senate. He told the Daily, the Daily Beast that he is seriously, seriously, seriously considering running for the U.S. Senate to, rep to replace Jeff Flake. He'd obviously have an upper hand in the primaries, bec specifically because of all the media attacks on him, because he had to be pardoned by President Trump. And that means that uh, a lot of people on the right think that he's a martyr to the cause, right? that he's somebody who is anti-illegal immigration. Uh, he is somebody who used to dress up his prisoners in pink outfits. We like that sort of stuff since we don't like crime and we don't like illegal immigration. And the initial media attacks were on that stuff, not on corruption in the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, which apparently did exist. They paid a $3.5 million settlement to a local newspaper after trying to arrest newspaper reporters for reporting on a subpoena. Um, but all of that put to the side, one of the things that unites the sort of feeling for Trump and Roy Moore and, and, uh, and Joe Arpaio is this feeling like if the initial attack on them was over their conservatism or over their right-wing views, then all further attacks must be discredited based on the malice of the media. And the media doesn't help its own case when it doesn't press Beverly Young Nelson for a better explanation of why they didn't come out with this fact earlier, why it was weeks before they came out with the fact that the last two lines of this thing, at the very least, according to Beverly Young Nelson, uh, were written by Beverly Young Nelson. Uh, so, yeah, I think that Republicans are, are being a little disingenuous if they say that all allegations against Joe Arpaio are false because the initial attack on Joe Arpaio was wrong, or all the allegations against Roy Moore are false because the initial attack on Roy Moore was wrong over the Ten Commandments stuff. Like, the fact is that Roy Moore says a lot of stuff that is inappropriate. He says a lot of stuff that is bad. But because, again, I think that you basically have 10 seconds in the public eye to make people's minds up about what exactly you are, that once their minds have been made up, it's almost impossible to change them. I mean, this is actually what the social science data tends to suggest. That when you walk down the street, you make a decision within the first 10 seconds of meeting someone, whether you like them or not. And it's very difficult to change your opinion. The same is true in politics. The first impression is the lasting impression that people have about you with regard to politics. The first impression about Roy Moore is that he was a very religious guy who took the Ten Commandments seriously and wasn't going to bow to judicial supremacy. And that image has basically carried him through all of the credibility questions about him. It carries him through saying ridiculous things, right? In just a second, I'm going to play you a, a quote by Roy Moore himself that if any Democrats had it, the right would be going nuts. But the right doesn't care because anything that is used to attack Roy Moore is now being seen as, as bad faith. Here is a little bit of the, the tape that I'm talking about. Roy Moore was asked by The Guardian about Ronald Reagan once saying that the Russians were the, the evil empire and the focus of evil in the modern world. And here was Roy Moore's answer. He said the Russia was the focus of evil in the modern world. You could say that very well about America, couldn't you? Do you think? Well, we promote a lot of 
bad things, you know? Like? Same-sex marriage. That's the very argument that Vladimir Putin makes. Well, then maybe Putin is right. Maybe he's more akin to me than I know. <laughs> okay, so if any Democrat said that, right, that America is the focus of modern evil in this world, and then they cited, say, not same-sex marriage, but, but, high ta but low taxes, and then they said maybe Putin is right, we'd lose our minds. But Roy Moore says that it's totally fine, again, because people have made up their mind about Roy Moore already. The same is true. There's a quote, apparently, and I, I don't want to put too much stake in this quote. I'll read it to you, and then I'll tell you why. According to the LA Times, Roy Moore in September was asked about when he last thought America was great, because he's run very much on the Make America Great Again kind of bandwagon. And Moore apparently acknowledged the nation's ugly history vis-a-vis -vis race and racism. And then he said, I think it was great at the time when families were united. Even though we had slavery, they cared for one another. Our families were strong. Our country had a direction. So the way the media has run with this is saying that Roy Moore says the last time America was great is when there was slavery. I don't think that's what Roy Moore is saying, but it's certainly badly articulated. It's another one of these cases where because we distrust the media on the right, we want the entire context. We don't trust them to tell the truth. And this is just another example of, of why that is. So that distrust in the media allows people to take a molehill and make it into a mountain. In the case of Beverly Young Nelson and all the rest of the accusers, it allows them the ability to hang their hat on pegs that are not particularly sturdy. Again, does this call Beverly Young Nelson herself into question? Absolutely. Does it call Gloria Allred into question? Absolutely. Uh, and I will only follow where the evidence leads. When, when she first came out, I said, I thought this was very credible. I think it's a lot less credible now that, that you have this, this statement that she wrote in the yearbook herself. Uh, do I think it completely destroys her credibility? No, I'm not willing to go that far, but it's a problem for her. That said, for people to say this destroys all of the allegations against Roy Moore is, uh, is an overkill that I think is, is pretty shameless. And while the Republicans are having all of this hubbub over Moore and whether Moore is guilty or innocent and Joe Arpaio and Trent Franks. So Trent Franks stepped down yesterday. He says he's going to step down from Congress because two former female staffers are now complaining of sexual harassment. Apparently, Franks said that he and his wife have been struggling to get pregnant and that he had discussed surrogacy with two women in the workplace and it caused them distress. I'm confused as to why that exactly would be sexual harassment unless he said, I want to put a baby in you in which case it is sexual harassment. But if it was, you work here, I trust you, you seem like a nice gal, have you ever considered surrogacy? I'm not sure why that's sexual harassment per se. Like, I just, maybe the, the power imbalance, but it, that, that doesn't seem like typical sexual harassment to me, so I'm not sure we're getting the entire story on that. While all that breaks down on the Republican side, the Democrats are preening. The Democrats are walking around preening. We are just the moral guideposts for the United States. We are the most moral of the moral. This is the new shtick that Democrats have been trying out on a regular basis. Yesterday, Al Franken did a bad job with it, right? He, he tried to grab the moral high ground, but that failed because Al Franken wasn't really willing to acknowledge that he'd done anything wrong. Here's what Al Franken said yesterday in, in saying that he was going to resign. Not that he did resign yesterday, but that he, he would resign in short order. If Moore gets elected and is not thrown out of the Senate, I think there's a significant possibility that Franken actually retracts his retirement and says, you know what? I'm going to stick around now. If the Republicans aren't going to clean house, I'm certainly not going to leave over this. Here's what Moore said yesterday, uh, Franken said yesterday. Nevertheless, today I am announcing that in the coming weeks, I will be resigning as a member of the United States Senate. I, of all people, am aware that there is some irony in the fact that I am leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual assault sits in the Oval Office and a man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls' campaigns for the Senate with the, with the full support of his party. Okay, so there he, there he does. He also called himself a champion for women and said that the women who are accusing him had gotten it all wrong, but he's stepping down anyway. It's hard for you to claim the moral high ground when you're blaming the women, right? I thought the whole shtick here is that women always have to be believed unless you're Al Franken. And Franken himself, he, you know, he is, his accusers are angry at him, and I think for good reason. One of the Franken accusers, she comes out and she says she's just appalled that Franken won't, up to, won't own up to the situation. And so is there anything that for you would be justice? Um, I, I have to say that I, I'm so sad and appalled at his lack of response and um, him 
owning up to what he did. I feel that he just keeps he just keeps passing the buck and making it out to be something uh, that we we took his behavior the wrong way or uh, we misconstrued something. So it's or hard for them to just... grab the moral high ground in any case while they are busy giving it away. But they're trying to grab the moral high ground anyway, right? They're trying to say that Republicans don't understand the plight of women, but we Democrats, we understand the plight of women. Now, this is all cynical pandering. I mean, what they're actually attempting to do is flip the script so they can go after more in Trump, right? That's the whole goal here is that, OK, we'll sacrifice one of ours and then we'll use their bodies as a bridge in order to in order to climb the ramparts of, of Trump and, and Roy Moore. That's the whole goal here. And you see Chris Matthews did the, the clearest and dumbest version of this. So last night on his show, he got up, got to the show, got to my say. He talks about Democrats are the greatest people in the entire world. They're just, they're just fantastic. Go. Jason, your thoughts about the possibly positive uh, education that the public are gonna, I, I don't know how you can avoid the education in this. The, the worst you can say about the Democrats is they're too pure. And that's the right, stupid thing to right. say, but that's the worst thing you can say about it. And these guys set too high a standard for public office. How's that for an argument? Well, you can opponents, say about Democrats, the they're too pure. The, the, the only, that's the only thing you can say. I mean, the, 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 the preening, just self-aggrandizing stupidity of this nonsense. That The only thing, Monica Lewinsky's dress disagrees. Okay, the, the, Ted Kennedy's sexual assault victims disagree. The worst you can say about Democrats is that they're too pure. But this is their new routine. Oh, we have the moral high ground. And you can see how cynical this is, right? Democratic Representative Catherine, uh, Kathleen Rice, she comes out and she says, you know, really the guy who should resign here is, of course, Trump. Trump is the one who should really go. Now, although Democrats, you know, came, our leadership came to this issue a little late, they did call on uh, the resignations that have happened. And we need the Republicans to do the same thing. We need Paul Ryan to stand up and be the leader of his party. I know it's difficult for him to do that when the standard bearer of the Republican Party for right now is the president of the United States. And we know his history with this issue of harassment. So my hope and my call is for Paul Ryan and the Republican leadership to get with the program and start forcing people out. Why shouldn't he resign today like Franken did? If you're being consistent. Well, said, I have resign? said before that he I have said before that he should. I don't think that's going to happen. Right, that's the I cynical move the that Democrats are making, but they're claiming that they have the moral high ground while they're doing it. Again, two things can be true that Franken probably should go and also the Democrats are uh, are using this for cynical reasons, but the preening is a little much. Right? I mean, the, the the Democrats proclaiming themselves on loan from God is pretty astonishing. Nancy Pelosi did that as well yesterday. She extended it, right? Not only are they Nancy Pelosi was defending Al Franken until 5 seconds ago and John Conyers until 5 seconds ago. Not only does it turn out that the Democrats have a direct pipeline to God when it comes to sexual harassment, they also have a direct pipeline to God when it comes to legitimizing the children of illegal immigrants who came here when they were kids. We're not going to uh, turn this country into a reign of terror of domestic enforcement uh, uh, at the, and have the DACA, the Dreamers, pay that price. But the, I, I've, I'm optimistic. I, I always have been. Uh, God is with us on this. Our country is great. We know that greatness springs from the vitality that newcomers bring to our country. God is with us. Do you it understand? Is, they're so holy now. Don't you see the holiness that they have in getting rid of Al Franken has now translated over to everything, including DACA and the killing of human babies in the womb until the ninth month. And it's just amazing how this has happened. So before everybody jumps on their high horse and talks about how the Democrats have uh, they're, they're holy and now they're, they're all wonderful and they're too pure, as Chris Matthews says, yeah, not so much. OK, so I want to talk a little bit about media malfeasance. Uh, this is an amazing story. So CNN reported this apparent bombshell. And they got it totally wrong. I'll explain all of it to you in just a second. Okay, so here is the story from CNN. And this just shows you, you want to know why so many people are skeptical of the media, even on things like Roy Moore. You cannot count out the fact that the media are willing to jump over any barrier in order to get Republicans. They really are. And so when you ask, when, when, when the left looks at us and they say on the right, how could you possibly, how could you possibly not just credit the media with great reporting when they report something, it's because within three hours, half of this stuff gets discredited. Half is a little much, but a certain percentage of the stuff gets discredited. So, for example, there was a report from CNN. And the report from CNN said that on September 4th, there was an email that was sent to the Trump administration, to Donald J. Trump, to Donald, to Donald Trump Jr., to other members of the administration, and that this email had a key code, a decryption key, for WikiLeaks that had not yet been released publicly. That's a big scandal. If it turns out, 
then that's one step removed from actual collusion, right? If it turns out that the WikiLeaks people, at the behest of the Russian government, sent a decryption key to the Trump administration and the Trump campaign, and that the Trump campaign used it in order to go in and spy on Hillary Clinton's emails before those things were released publicly, that would look a lot like collusion, would it not? It turns out every element of the story is bullcrap, every single one. So first of all, the email was not sent on September 4th, before the WikiLeaks were leaked. It was sent on September 14th, after they were already public information. You didn't need a decryption key for public information. Number two, there's no evidence that Donald Trump Jr. or Donald Trump ever saw this email. Number three, there's no evidence that the email itself is legit, that it didn't just come from some spammer. So the way that this originally was run, the way the original headline was run, was something like, I want to I want to find if I can the actual headline CNN report Trump and Trump Jr. got September 2016 email with decryption key. Right. Here's what David Wright from CNN tweeted. He tweeted candidate Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr. and others in the Trump org received email in September 2016 offering a decryption key and website address for hacked WikiLeaks documents, according to email provided to congressional investigators. Right. Bombshell. Before any of this was public, they were being offered a special in by WikiLeaks, a.k.a. the Russian government. Except again, it turns out it may not have come from the Russian government. There's no evidence Trump looked at it. And the email came 10 days after the initial CNN report said, which means that the email came out after all the information was public. I mean, this is a Brian Ross level screw up. It is a massive, massive screw up. It, somebody needs to get suspended for it at the very least, because to misreport in that dramatic a fashion does a disservice to the Trump administration. Then you wonder why Trump runs around shouting fake news. You wonder why Republicans distrust reporting from places like the Washington Post. You wonder why Republicans have now come to the conclusion that nothing can be trusted. Part of it is because they're taking the message too far, but part of it is because there is a grain of truth, which is that a lot of the media are willing to jump on stories that have not been vetted and are not true in order to promulgate a particular narrative. And this is just the best example of that. Democrats are doing this too. Representative Julian Castro, who has presidential aspirations, he comes out and he says that, don't worry, even though there really is no hard information connecting Trump and Russia at this point, disturbing things will definitely come out. I mean, come on. Well, as you know, uh, I can't discuss uh, most of that stuff now. But, uh, you know, I told you months ago, and when I said it back then, I think it was considered a little bit brash. But I said, I think in April, that I thought that there would be people who would end up in jail. And, uh, and as I stand here now, I think that there are going to be some things that come out that will be very surprising and disturbing. Pause it right there, the I just people. want to read the Chiron, right? This was, earlier, well, as, this was earlier yesterday, and it says, CNN exclusive, undisclosed email show follow-up after Don Jr. meeting with Russians at Trump Tower. But the follow-up didn't actually have anything bad to that either. There's no evidence that any follow-up was even responded to by the Trump people. So everything that CNN is reporting, and when you watch CNN, half their coverage is about Russia stuff, they're... Not only is there no smoking gun, there's no bullet, there's no gun. Like, we, we, I don't even know what these stories are supposed to be proving when they're this bad. And then, they, and then again, it's amazing to me. People are wondering, how could it possibly be? How could it possibly be that people don't trust the mainstream media? This is why people don't trust the mainstream media, seriously.